Okay, good. So let's go through case. I put two cases. We'll see. We usually we are going like we have good discussion, so we usually don't have enough time to go through two, but we'll see. So this is the case for today. So let me open it there. Oh, oh, so it's asking me for mm, so that's not good because I won't. It shouldn't be asking for for a password. Anyway, I'm gonna share it. If you have issues, let me know. Uh, it shouldn't be asking for a password because I, I do a little bit of a trick. Um, maybe my trick didn't work this time. Anyway, I, I'll share the case there. That's the link to the case. And then we go through the history. Okay, close. So this is an older mixed breed dog. It's an Irish Wolfhound mixed cross with a Labrador. And the presenting complaint is like weight loss and exercise intolerance. And then, oh, now I need to find the images. Yeah. Oh, so probably, okay. Good. Okay, there we go. So three projections of the thorax. Yeah. Excellent. So take a look. Again, you can do both. You can go through, you could look at my screen or you can just open images in your computer and then I'm all ears and we do as usual. You bring your findings all together like, like, a, like a waterfall of findings. We don't question them a lot in the beginning. Then we review them one by one and we see if we agree or not. And then we try to put things together. So that's kind of the sequence. Uh, so now it's time to take a look and then uh, start bringing findings. I got a new pen and new uh, note. It's not like notebook. Abnormal is the first thing that jumps to mind. Yeah. Um, a few things I guess to just start is generalized increased opacity um, in the lung fields, not necessarily in the lungs themselves, and um, more focused um, cranially uh, than quarterly, um, and a dorsally deviated yes, please, I won't see. Um, are probably the two first oh. things that come out to me. What was the last part? Um, a dorsally deviated trachea, like you can see the curve just above the heart, making me concerned about something around there. Good, yeah. So, so increased opacity and then deviation of the trachea, dorsal. Okay, good. Anything else? I would probably suggest You, or we all try to define. So when you were saying um, normal abnormal, what it came to mind is another another of the silly or very simple comments. And again, I play with this silly, but sometimes it's not silly. Another big call is: is it too white or too black? Makes sense because you know, and sometimes it's both, but sometimes it's, I don't know, like a case of a pneumothorax or a pneumomediastinum. We, we got a case last week where, it, you know, just looking at the images, it looked like something is too black there. And and that's the first approach. So it's, there's too much gas somewhere. And then you can get closer and say, well, where is it? Is in the SOQ, pleural space, mediastinum. And then you have different tools to figure that out. Another call is, almost like we are, what you are saying, there is an increased opacity when you don't know where to put it, another way to, 
to say is, is in the thorax. <laughs> Makes sense. So you are not really saying in in which compartment within the thorax. Are you saying you know it looks too wide in the craniovental thorax in the lateral projection? So basically, you're not saying precisely where you think anatomically, you know, which compartment it is. You're just saying it looks too wide. And I think that, I mean, it's a little step forward. It's not a huge step forward, but it's in the, probably in the right direction. And then you can like keep on uh, tweaking, you know, wh where is that increased opacity? So, yeah, so I, I, I basically agree with you. I would probably suggest we, we, we wait to see what the others have to say, but probably I would, try to keep on going in that direction, you know, that increased opacity, where is it? Anything else? Yeah. On a different computer. Um, oh. <laughs> um, so I guess one thing that jumps out is that on the DV, the right side of the heart or that area that looks like it's silhouetting with the heart is abnormal. Um, I'm just trying to decide now because it's under the spine, whether it's enlargement of the right side of the heart or the right atria, but it just looks a bit almost disconnected, but I've also convinced myself that potentially there's a left, a shift or a mass effect pushing the heart more to the left as well. Um, the other thing I can see as well is I think there's pleural fissure lines bilaterally. Um, on the, the lateral, kind of supporting Alex's comment as well, um, that increase in opacity that, that looks like it might be responsible for the dorsal deviation of the trachea is, looks like it's kind of in the area of the right atrium, but I guess that could also be mediastinum. Okay. I would probably ask you to draw on the images. What are you referring to when you refer to, in the DV projection, you say silhouetting of the cardiac silhouette and then in the lateral projection, you, you were, were trying to kind of triangulate, you were trying to say, well, these abnormalities in this projection and then in the other. Do you mind showing us what well, you said you may be in the right, in the area of the right atrium in lateral, lateral projection? Do you mind showing yeah, yeah. that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I'll try. Um, so I'm looking at this area here. Okay. And in the DV? In the DV, I'm thinking, just trying to remember, it's like more cranial, I believe, um, like this kind of area. Okay. I'm trying to remember the clock face. <laughs> well, no, no, that's perfect. So if you grow based on the clock face, then remember that this area, hopefully you can see my, my, my mouse there, that area, do you remember that we said that there's a superimposition of many things? Mm -hmm. So those many things were the right atrium, the, um, aortic root and then the pulmonary output tract. So the, the three of them, they are, and we went through the CT. And then if you go through the CT, you can see, you know, the right atrium is gonna be kind of here in the, so now we move that knowledge into the other projections. So if we go on the DV, then we have the right atrium in this area. And then we have the aorta from one to two. And that's that's probably the contour. Not, not 100% sure probably this one. And then it's going to be a pulmonary output trap. So, so that's the way that we have to get a bit closer to that abnormality. So here we see there, there we don't know where it could be lateral laterally makes sense. So if it's on the right, middle, on the left, and then we try to come here and try to make that call. So, but very good point. Yeah. Also very good point about the perficial lines and, um, Probably, yeah, there. So again, this this perficial line is probably not so relevant to, to identify it. It's not so relevant in terms of the justifying the exercise, exercise intolerance because it's, the amount of fluid is not that much. 
but probably it's going to give us a little bit of a hint about what is the underlying disease process. In a sense, so it should be a, a disease process that results in fluid in the first space. So it's not so much, again, based on the amount and the, um, the need for to treatment is a diagnostic hint. And I would probably add this line here, which is, so, and this is also good to memorize where these perfusion lines show up. So this is the right cranial, right middle. So that's the separation between those two lobes. And then this is the right middle and this is the right caudal. And then this is the separation between those two lobes. So it always shows up in the same place. So when you're searching for perfusion lines, just go there. Okay. Have, have we got mediastinal enlargement? Okay. So do you mind showing that? Well, okay, very good, very good. And probably I would, uh, yes, excellent, excellent. So the other line, so widening of the mediastinum. And do you remember last time we had a little bit of a discussion about this? I don't remember the case, but, and we, I mentioned the thing like, you know, the, the lung should be, should go all the way to the first rib. We need to figure out if that displacement is due to pleural effusion or is in the mediastinum. And then one thing to be aware about is that very fat dogs, in particular, kind of brachycephalic, in particular, the bulldog, uh, can have a lot of fat in the mediastinum. So, yeah. So if we go by that, this doesn't seem to be a very fat dog. So then that finding tends to be, in my eyes, a lot more relevant. So very good point. So we have widening of the mediastinum. Cranial, actually, we, we can be a lot more specific. Widening of the cranial mediastinum. Okay, what else? I'm wondering if that mass effect that Josh has already mentioned to me, it's a little bit cranial for a lymph node, but I'm wondering about the um, tracheobronchial lymph nodes. Okay, so now you are, you are um, already trying to make an interpretation of that. We, and I, I, so I agree with one of the differentials should be tracheobronchial lymph nodes. Okay, good. Lymph nodes, good. I think they're a little bit, it's a little, the mass is a little bit far cranial. What was that? Far cranial? A, a little bit, a bit too far cranially for the, for a tracheobronchial lymph node. Okay. 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 Good. So it's an idea, but it's not a perfect fit. I think you can also see, I'm just trying to bring the picture back up so I can see both of them at the same time, but um, I think you can also see air bronchograms within that mass. That's when I'm expanding it. Can you show us that? Um, well, the problem is I can see it when I just look at your post and I'm not sure I can see it on your pictures. So I can show you the area, but it's just- Okay, that's, that's okay. Uh, let's try again. I'm looking at viewing options again, annotate, there you go, sorry. I'm doing, where is that? Draw. So, Again, I haven't got this expanded, so it's a little bit hard for me to see, but can you there and these might not be in quite the right place, but that's more or less. Okay, that's good. I can see. That's good. So I, I take note and then we explore that idea. Okay. Okay. Anything else? 
because kind of the next step is going to be to go through all of these and see if we have any, if we have an agreement or if they, we have someone arguing against saying, no, I disagree with that, I think. So we review these findings. I have a little bit of a question about, I think we are missing one very important finding, but it may come on its own. I, I probably prefer not to just give it out or give it away. Um, Can I, just one more thing. There's something yeah. in the VD or the DV, you can see there's a lot of variation in the, the lung fields. So I guess in the cranial thorax, and I'm not, I can't tell you what I'm seeing because I can't quite describe it, but it's, it's uh, you can see very well aerated lung or what I believe to be well aerated lung. Mm -hmm. Then you can see a, unless it's mediastinum, but I don't think it is. Um, I'll try and draw it for you. That's yes. Awesome. So I've got a map to drawing. Hang on. You can tell I'm not very techno savvy. Are you long. are you planning to draw on the DB? Yes, I am. Okay, let me let me do this so then I'm I'm helping you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so we're now coming down. This, sorry, that's, that's gone too far. Ignore the extended bit. I can't work out what that is there. So is it a piece of lung that's become slightly more consolidated? And I'm drawing. I don't, see, I don't see your drawing. Okay, try and get rid of this. Um, clear. Right yeah. up the top, it says view options. Get, yeah, no, I've got, I've, got, I've got the pen. Uh, so view I'm, options and, and then annotate then you should get a, a line across. Um, so you need to pick draw. No, yeah, I'm, ahead, I'm ahead of you there. I've got in my uh, picture it may, be, it may be that when I made it like full screen, it doesn't allow because now they are showing up. So okay, hang on. I, I leave it there because I, I was trying to help you when I wasn't. So let, okay. let's, let's use this image. Okay, so now. That area there is what I'm worrying about. Okay, good, 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 good. So I, yeah, well, good. So it's a puzzling image, and I agree with you. Is there? Is wide? Is well defined? Is kind of triangular? Has smooth contours? And then I, I'm with you that kind of make noise and pain in your brain because it kind of looks like the border of the lung, but it cannot be the border of the lung. Makes sense because the border yeah. of the lung. Is superimposed, and it goes to the to the border of the thoracic cavity and to the to the to the edge of the thoracic wall, and it looks perfectly aerated. So, what can it be that wide? Okay, good. So we leave it there. That feature, I'm not 100% what it is, but I have a theory, and I will put that together with this, which is as puzzling. So that's a triangular, it makes sense. We usually don't get this triangle here. Okay. And it's broad base towards the mediastinum and it thins out to the periphery. And probably that as well, but I, this I don't know what it is. But that one, see triangular, thins mm -hmm. out to the periphery, broad base towards the mediastinum. That's pro, that has something, some, some flavor close to that. So we get two of them. Yeah, very good. And a strategy when you find something that you cannot explain, first is very hard because it's a lot easier to identify something, to say this. So if you look at something that looks like whatever, a pulmonary mass, then, then everything fits, you just describe it. And then you half use what is in there, half use what you expect. In this case, because we don't have an expectation about that, it's a very unusual thing. Then it's a lot harder. I would probably suggest in those cases to have a very, to be very descriptive, to say, well, is where it is, what's the shape, what's the opacity, and all of that. And then probably by that exercise, then 
that is going to help us get closer to at least a hypothesis of what it could be. Mm -hmm. But good, good, very good point. Uh, that is there is is very unusual. So I, I agree with that. Anything else? We are leaving one, actually probably the most important feature out, which is close no. to another feature that you mentioned, but I don't think we have like really put our finger on that one. Hopefully I haven't missed it. The increased capacity of the left cranial lobe. There is, um, I feel like this, um, this lobe here has an increased opacity and there is also an area of decreased opacity in that lobe. Um, and also on the laterals, one of the laterals you have, um, you know, you can see if increased opacity, you can see um, silhouetting of the heart here, whereas on the, the other lateral, you don't um, you don't get any silhouetting of the heart, so it might well be that there is um, some localized opacity to the left cranial lobe. Mm, mm. Mm. So here we kind of see. Well, it's hard to know if we are use, using the rib or or if there is actually. I think I have a, a, an idea that we can see a bit of the border of the heart here, but I agree with you, not so much here. Okay, anything else? Otherwise we start probably doing hypothesis testing. That may that may actually bring us to what the feature that is missing. Or the final on, on, on one lateral view, I thought I could I could imagine a, um, a external lymph node enlargement. On the other lateral view, it's a bit harder to see. But um, I think. It also, might be, I might be still suffering acute imaginitis. Mm, no, no, no. You, you mentioned that, and I, I basically I agree with you. So we can transition to that now. So we try to explain. If you, if we have the, let's play for a minute that about this idea. Let's try to see how well it fits the tracheobronchial lymphadenopathy or. Uh, lymphadenomegaly, so enlargement of the tracheobronchial lymph nodes. Which of all the findings that we listed can we explain? Because the, the, this is the exercise that, that we need to do now. So. I could probably summarize. So there is an increased opacity. The increased opacity, I think, is very is the same thing that is displaced in the trachea, and it seems to be. I'm trying to put all the findings that you mentioned before together. So that increased opacity is in the cranial mediastinum, is in the cranial thorax, very likely in the cranial mediastinum, very likely is the same thing that is displaced in the trachea dorsally in the lateral projections, very likely is the same thing that is resulting in that silhouetting of the cardiac silhouette cranially. So that is the that is summary of the increased opacity, dorsal deviation of the trachea. The, the, there are pre-official lines. So there has to be a disease process that somehow is resulting in a, a bit of fluid in the pleura. Uh, we have the widening of the cranial mediastinum, which I already, I, I personally put together with that increased opacity in the cranial, in the cranial thorax. Then, and then we have the airborne grams. Probably I go with the airborne grams. Try to stay away from reading airborne grams in this area, because do you remember, the idea of the airborne grams is like gas, which is always there, gas within the airway. And then what is abnormal is not so much the gas within the airway, is what is surrounding the gas. So, and usually it's fluid within the lung. So in this area, there may be many other things which are not in the lung, and then the, which, for example, vessels and things in the in the mediastinum that can produce that appearance. So even though it looks like air within the airway, surrounded by by soft tissue, uh, I probably would stay away from from measuring that. I would try to come to the what I believe is lung. So probably that way. What I'm, I'm trying to say is, here we don't know where that increased opacity is. Is it in the lung? 
is it in the media's time? Um, we don't know. So then an air bronchogram is, I think by definition, is the increased opacity within the lungs, silhouetting the lung vessels. So then I would probably either try to find that in the periphery of the lung or, or here, or try to match. Like you see that, and then do I see that in the other projections? Do I see that increased lung opacity? And with that, I have a difficulty. So we went through the findings, I put them together, and then there's one hypothesis, which is, well, one way to explain this is trigger bronchial lymphadenopathy or lymphadenomegaly. My question is again, how many of the findings that we I listed can we explain if we take that as a hypothesis? Hmm. We're all very quiet this morning. <laughs> Probably a few of them. Um, of course, like the mediastinal widening, the question is, is it fluid that's widening it or is it soft tissue? Um, if it's fluid, it could be associated with a, either a septic process or a neoplastic process. Yeah, and then pray the other, I, I like that point. So one of the features that we could potentially explain blaming the tracheobronchial lymph nodes being enlarged is this deviation of the trachea. And we are gonna go through that in detail because this is not the most common way or place where we have the lymph nodes, but it's in the hilus, it's in the tracheobronchial region. So yeah, so that we could probably explain. If we have a disease that is resulting in enlargement of the tracheobronchial lymph nodes, then those are in the mediastinum. So then we can explain changes in the mediastinum. So we can say, well, if the trigger bronchial lymph nodes are enlarged, probably the mediastinal lymph nodes are enlarged. And that can explain the widening of the mediastinum. So there we have almost the two most important findings, which is the deviation of the trachea and then the widening of the mediastinum. Basically, we are, we are now trying to put something in the mediastinum. And then because it's in the tracheobronchial region, then we can think about a lymph node. And then if that lymph node is affected, maybe the mediastinal lymph node is also affected. And then we can explain multiple of the findings, um, blaming the lymph nodes. Then, then that disease process could probably have led to, to pleural effusion a minimal amount. And I'm probably thinking about something like, like a, a disease process that would result in that severe enlargement of the tracheobronchial lymph nodes or mediastinal lymph nodes could be lymphoma, could be a histiocytic sarcoma. So those are probably two, two big differences. Another one could be fungal disease, makes sense with enlargement of the tracheobronchial lymph nodes. In, any other option? Because this is not a case of that. And I'll show you where, how those look like. Actually, we have a case that we already discussed and I'll probably bring it back, but probably not now. I want you to present another hypothesis. I missed the um, signalment and everything because I was a little bit late this morning, but could it be a, like a heart-based tumor? Okay, good. So then another hypothesis number two. Um, which one of all the imaging findings can we explain with the, that um, hypothesis? The, um, the dorsal displacement of the trachea in the, like, I guess also particularly where it's displaced and the um, abnormal um, cardiac silhouette. So the, on the VD, um, the, the section that Josh was describing with the, uh, with the clock face. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess potentially also a mild pleural effusion would be uh, a reasonable 
um, and even potentially um, uh, lymph node enlargement in that area as well if it was a if it was a tumor there. Excellent. So actually, many of the findings could also be explained if we put there a heart based mass. Okay, excellent. So that that's the two hypotheses. Probably, I think trigger bronchial and omegaly, and then any any other. Did we did we say thymoma already as well? So thymoma. Do you want do you want to um, is, is in your mind that is different from the heart base? So now we are talking about a mediastinal mass. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I play the same game. So which one of the all, all the findings can we explain with time moment? Um, the mediastinal enlargement. Yes. Potentially the if the if the those are lymph nodes that are enlarged around the heart base, then that might might be secondary to a, a mass in the mediastinum. Um potentially also a pleural effusion, a mild pleural effusion. Okay, good, good, good. I like all of that. The only thing that we probably know, and then now probably I, I, I start talking, another, mm -hmm. uh, the thing that we, know, we won't be able to explain is this very characteristic. So the whole case is to show you a case of this type of trachea displacement. So do you see that trachea comes very nicely and then kind of dives down? Yeah. So this is a curvature. And he's present not in one projection, but in, in two projections. So if there will be just a mediastinal mass that is sitting here, this will not appear like that. It will be displaced here. It's like if you're pushing it dorsally, but then, then the rest comes normally. The situations where you have this kind of kinking of the this part of the trachea, is because there is something here. And is 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 let me say it like this, kind of attached. Makes sense? So it's, it's really pushing the trachea at that point. If you just move the trachea up here, this curvature of the trachea will not happen. Yeah. Makes sense? So this is a super characteristic uh, feature, which is that you know it's not only the elevation, but it's also the curvature of, of the of the trachea which will not happen with a mediastinal mass. And that is exactly the reason why I like the other two differentials, because the other two differentials are, are masses in the heart base. And then masses in the heart base can produce this, this abrupt, let's say, you know, or, or this focal tracheal displacement at that particular point. The other feature that you all miss, which is extremely important, is the deviation, sorry, the division of the trachea to the right. Do you see the trachea there? Oh. And it's hugely displaced. We always allow the trachea to be displaced to the right because we have the aorta to the left, but not that much. Um, and, now if, and then, so my suggestion would be every time you see a displacement of the trachea in one projection, force yourself to see where the trachea is in the other projection. And here you see it's coming there. So there's something here. So that increased opacity that you can see here, I think if I need to locate it in this projection, I will put it in the mediastinal room, but not only in the mediastinal room sitting there, but on the heart base. I sense the, see how the trachea is so displaced to the right. So that's, that's so the, this whole case is to show you an example of this characteristic displacement of or appearance of the trachea in the lateral projection and in the TV projection. And now I'll give you a bit of my interpretation of some of the findings. And I don't, I don't think I have a, a, a pro, a like a 100% way to confirm or prove myself right. This broad-based triangular opacities, broad-based towards the, the mediastinum, well-defined soft tissue opacities, I believe it's fluid in the mediastinum. This is what the book described how the, it looks fluid in the mediastinum. So it's kind of a reverse fissure line. So if you get a pleural fissure line and you keep on adding fluid, it's gonna be wider towards the thoracic wall. 
And that's based on the attachment of the lamb. Makes sense? So if you keep on adding fluid, then the, the artificial lines will be broad based towards the periphery. If you put a lot of fluid in the, the mediastinum, then the the, no, it's not a pleurofacial line, kind of the, the reverse facial lines are reversed because they are broad based towards the center. And I think that is, I, I'm pretty sure this is the mediastinum, almost 100% sure. And based, they don't, it, that doesn't have the shape of a mass. So I will blame either fluid or fat. And then I'll do the same thing with this one and probably with that one. This, or the option to this, I mean, because I'm not 100% sure, I'm also thinking about options. The option to that would be just the mass. Just the mass that is in the heart base is, is crazy and is going and, and extending uh, to this point and also to this point. The reason why I don't like that is because based on the shape. So the shape doesn't look like perfectly rounded. It looks more like a triangular thing, which would have, is what I would expect fluid in the mediastinum do. Uh, again, very unusual. That probably, I'm spending the time and explaining that to you because you found it and it's there. Very unusual finding. The usual finding, the take home message is this characteristic displacement of the trachea. This in particular is the characteristic feature of heart based mass. That is exactly how it looks. Uh, and now we have many other features and things here that support the idea, like the widening of the mediastinum, the silhouetting of the cardiac, the cranial body of the cardiac silhouette. So all of that adds to that uh, hypothesis. I now want to show you, and then I have a little bit of a um, summary from the book, how a tracheobronchial bronchial lymphadenopathy looks like. So this case we looked at before already. So it should be, I'll, hmm, should be case number, oh, okay. I, I'll figure out, but I just took it. So where is it? So, oh, okay. So we close. It says it there. <laughs> it's case number 30. So if you want to review this, and I'm sure you can even go through the video. This is a case of tracheobronchial, well, not only tracheobronchial lymphadenopathy, but one of the important features is tracheobronchial lymphadenopathy. And it's this. Usually, so it's in the heart base, but most of the time, so if so, there are three lymph nodes, right, left, and, and middle. So the middle is usually the one that gets more affected, and it's the one that is more called the dorsal to the bifurcation. So instead of seeing that diving back because there's a mass here, we see that increased opacity, let's say, called the dorsal to the tracheal bifurcation. So in a heart, heart base, they look slightly different, a heart based mass or, or lymphadenopathy. There is the weird case where not the middle like lymph node is enlarged by the right or the left, and then it can look very similar to the case that we had. That's why I was not saying I'm wrong. I'm saying that's the usual appearance of a heart based tumor. I don't think we can rule out uh, lymphadenopathy, but the classic lymphadenopathy is more disappearance, it's more called dorsal. Um, and because it's called the dorsal to the bifurcation, usually the main bronchi and the trachea are displaced ventrally. Makes sense? So they go this way down. So this is a nice case, probably the same thing here. This is a bit oblique. So, but it's like increased opacity in the hilar region, and if anything, ventral displacement of the main bronchi to the caudal angulus. That is the classic appearance of a trachea bronchial lymphadenopathy. The classic appearance of a heart-based mass, which also includes a lymphadenopathy, but not the classic appearance of a lymphadenopathy, is more like this. That characteristic curvature of the trachea, widening and displacement of the trachea on the DV projection as well. So I try to make a little bit of a summary. This is from Thrall. So uh, as always, I recommend going and reading that and then probably going and looking at the other video as well. But as a summary, um, there is kind of a little bit of a section talking about the hilar masses. Uh, they can be what they call, well, masses arising from the base of the heart or tracheobronchial lymph nodes. It gives a little bit of an idea about where the lymph nodes are sitting. Uh, that's probably worth doing. I'm not gonna go in that detail. Um, 
But if you talk about the enlargement of the trigger bronchial lymph nodes, then the, what we expect is a soft tissue man located dorsal caudal to extracellular bifurcation on the lateral view, which is not the case in, in this case. Makes sense. So this is not dorsal caudal to the bifurcation. And then that results in craniovental displacement of the trachea bifurcation. So that's more like the other case that I showed you before. Like this is more like in this case, okay? So the mass is sitting up there and then ventral displacement. Um, now, if you go, mass is arising from the heart base. So typically the cause, why were displacement of the trachea? And that's the thing that we missed in the beginning in this case, which is this. That's the right word deviation of the trachea. Oh, sorry. And then we come here. And then the, um, it's not talking that much about that displacement of the trachea than kinking or, or curvature of the trachea at the base, heart base. But I think that's a very, uh, I would be careful in reading only that. But if you put that together with the change in the mediastinum and then the, the right displacement of the trachea on the DV project, I think you have a very strong case. And the interesting thing is that what are the things that we need to be thinking about when we see that? So heart-based tumor, which could be right atrial tumor on a, or a large pulmonary artery. And then this is the, the whole point of this case. I thought about presenting this case when we had, do you remember that we had the pulmonary hypertension in the reverse PDA? And then one of the comments, I can try, I can try to bring it. One of the comments was, well, this, this, something abnormal in the media, it looks like the mediastinum is abnormal. And I said, yeah, because it is abnormal, but I think it's the enlargement of the pulmonary arteries. So based on that comment, I thought about presenting this case. So let me bring it back. So this was the case. So I'm trying to link the cases or the ideas. So this is the case. And do you remember there was some discussion about this looks abnormal. And there was a lot of discussion about is in the mediastinum, is it not in the mediastinum? And then even in the lateral projection, well, not so much in that But I think it was based on this that we were discussing. Is that in the media time? And, and this is a pulmonary ulcer, which is super enlarged. So based on that, that what the book is saying, you know, an enlarged pulmonary artery can look like a heart-based mass. Uh, and this this was the reason why I decided to to present the other case. But it's always good to know how this is a, in my eyes is a classic heart-based mass. If you remember this case, I think, and we discussed the features, I think you're in the right track. This is this is a classic heart-based mass. Sometimes it's not as obvious. Um, yeah. Um, yes, and then I think it's a good idea to put it together with the trigger bronchial lymph nodes. And again, some things are similar, some things are different. So one important point to, to mention is this mass is not small. And there's one feature that is very clear is that, for example, no one really said mass. And the reason we are talking about a mass effect and the reason why, even though this mass is so large, there are no, it's not, doesn't look like a mass that clearly is because it's in the mediastinum. So remember that in the mediastinum, there are soft tissues, the mass is soft tissues, so they are silhouetting. So basically, even though there is a mass, it's very hard to pinpoint the borders of the mass. And that's because of the same idea of the grape surrounded by water. Make sense? So if that same size mass, instead of being in the mediastinum, would be in the lung, you would see borders and you would just jump right away. So that's another very important point that goes across the board. Like masses in the mediastinum was a lot harder to see because they are not contrasting with the air within the lung. So that's a general a comment that goes to anything happening in the mediastinum. And that's why CT becomes so useful for the mediastinum, because it can, with the contrast, it can kind of separate those two things. Mariano, is the um, increased opacity cranial to the heart on the left side mediastinal rather than pulmonary then? This one. <clears throat> I'll, um, in this area here. Okay, in... good. I think that is in the lung, but um, so in, in my eyes, that doesn't, so it looks a bit more really opaque compared to the other. 
Okay, but I, I, if I look carefully, I think I can still see vessels. And then that lung is the lung that is uh, not extending to the first wave. So if I put all of those findings together, I would probably blame that mild increase in lung opacity to atelectasis. Ah, uh, okay. Makes sense? So I would say, well, certainly, that doesn't look that bad to explain this. I think this, so I think there's a mass there and I think there's fluid in the mediastinum, the fluid, the mass and the fluid are, are the explanation for the silhouetting of the cranial border of the heart and this increased opacity. Yeah. A combination of pleural effusion and mediastinal fluid is the explanation for this retraction of the lung or, or the partial atelectasis. If I get that into the mix, then I can explain why this lung is a bit more opaque compared to that lung. But certainly the disease, the most important disease process is happening here in the heart base and cranial mm. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Tough, tough case. Uh, again, the trachea, the trachea is, is all in this case. It, it, the whole point is to show you um, that, that characteristic displacement of the trachea. The trachea, again, if you go back, it all goes back to the principles. We rely on things that are easy to see. Trachea is gas field, easy to see, it's in the mediastinum. So it's the delta. You know, when we want to study the mediastinum, things in the mediastinum we don't usually see. Make sense? Cranial vena cave, brachycephalic arch, lymph nodes, uh, we don't see anything. And it's not because of the size, it's because the grapes are only by fluid, you know, they see right. But good news, we have one structure which is gas field, and we see easy, which is the trachea. And then the whole evaluation of the mediastinum is based on that, that structure, you know, how, and then we go very thin, you know, if it's is the, the, the mass is, is sits here, we think one way. If the mass sits there, we think another way. If the mass sits in the mediastinum, in the craniovental mediastinum, we think one way. If the mass sits dorsal, another list of differentials. Make sense? So it's, it's a whole story about, Displacement of the trachea, if you want, if you want it, if you want to boil it down to the to the very core, the whole. Uh, I may bring more cases about the mediastinum, and we actually the next case is another case that kind of takes on from from this case, and it kind of ex expands the these principles. Uh, but as a summary, this is this is this whole hour is about that trachea. Which hopefully now you understand how we use as a telltale for things happening around that trachea. So in addition, so when you look at the trachea, it's not only the trachea. You all feel a bit foolish now for missing that, but it sort of when I first looked at that, you as you say, you just think that that's the mediastinum clear, clearly highlighted, and I didn't see it as the trachea. But, um, oh well, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it happens to happen to all of us until you see and something like today happens and someone says, "Oh, haven't you seen that?" And now you know where you see it. So from now on, not in every case it's so easy to see, but from now on, every time you take a DV, force yourself to look at to 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 figure out where the trachea sits. Yeah, yeah. The more you do that, the easier it's going to be to identify it, and then then the more you can use it as a feature, you know, as, 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 as something that you use to, to feel, to feed your, your assessment. Yeah, focus. Just another question. You know, the area I pointed out to you on the, it's on the left side of the chest now. So you think that line that we're, we're seeing, that is, that's not lung at all. That is just the edge of the mediastinum filled with this mass. Is that, is that what you're yeah. saying? So there are many lines here. And remember that now we are dealing with the problem of a 3D object reduced to a 2D image. So something that we see here, we may have multiple things superimposed over each other. Make sense? So there may, may be multiple lines even crossing each other. And the reason why that happens is because one, they are not in the same place. One is a bit more dorsal, one is a bit more ventral. So I tell you my, my way of reading this so my way of reading this is these lines that you see probably here, this one and probably that one, those are the dorsal 
Those are the board, lateral borders of the mediastinum dorsally. Okay. More ventrally, then we have the, the cardiac silhouette. Then probably we have this, which is the mediastinum, but now we have two lines. And then you're going to be asking my, me, how can we have two lines for the same object? Well, the reason is that it may not be a perfect thing. It may be wider, more ventrally, and narrower, more dorsally. Yeah. And same thing I would add to this. So I, I don't think those, I don't think those could be the contours of the heart because they are never pointy like that. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just dorsally in the mediastinum, probably dorsally, like that fluid in the mediastinum. And then that fluid is silhouetting with the cardiac silhouette. I don't have a very convincing way to, to prove myself right to, at this point. Makes sense, I'm, I'm trying to make up a story. What I'm not upset about is that there are multiple lines, one, one on top of the other. And then my, my way to explain that is that, you know, 3D object to the, to the image, something that is on top is gonna superimpose with something that is more ventral. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's what I'm using to figure that out. In my eyes, what it does fit is that we see the, so if, if I have, if I, if I entertain the idea of this being fluid in the mediastinum, then I can explain why I don't see the contour of the heart. Makes sense because it's, it's in the mediastinum, the heart is in the mediastinum, they are silhouetting. So therefore, what I'm seeing is the border of the mediastinum against the lung, and I don't see the border of the, 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 the separation or the border in between the fluid in the mediastinum and the cardiac silhouette. So in, in my mind, that argument fits. That is yeah. right. No, 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 100%, I need to be humble, but it is it, it, rational, it makes sense, it kind of fits. And yeah. that, if, if I'm right, and all of this is fluid and mass, a mixture of both, then, then I would expect that in the same way that is silhouetting, the silhouetting of the cardiac silhouette here, they should be silhouetting of the cardiac silhouette in the other projections. And I think that is happening there. So all of this increased opacity, I think is fluid and mass in the mediastinum, but the mass, is not in the mediastinum, it's in the, in the heart base, because a mass in the mediastinum, even if I don't see the contours, I feel that I have enough information to make that statement. A mass sitting in the mediastinum, like a classic thymoma, is unlikely gonna result in that uh, appearance of the trachea. This is kind of almost reserved to something that at least is in the heart base. It may have been a mediastinum mass that grew to the heart base, but sometimes, somehow you need something attached to a heart base to explain that, that characteristic curvature, diving of, the, of this part of the trachea. Otherwise, this will go straight and then it will be elevation of the trachea here. Probably I'll, I'll bring like a, I don't know if we have like a media standard, like a classic cranial media standard mass. And you will see that there is displacement of the trachea, but it looks different. Again, different also from the tracheobronchial lymph nodes. So again, same, same element, same anatomical structure, the trachea, uh, different, depending where the different neighbors get abnormal, the trachea is gonna look slightly different. And this is the whole topic about this today. We, I suggest you go through the lymph nodes. Hopefully we talk extensively about the lymph nodes in the previous video. And next time we have another that expands on this idea of the trachea. So I'm giving you already a hint about how to tackle the next case, which is built on this knowledge. That sounds good. Thank you, Mariano. Yeah, that was, yeah, another good learning episode. Thanks, Mariano. Good. So I'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so the much. The case is already, the case is already there. So you, you have like one week to, to, to create your, to, your position and to be able to defend it. So it's 78, is it? Because this was yes. 77, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, done. See you next week then.